In this short video, I am going to explain why adaptive control theory is important for real-time applications and what can it achieve more when we compare such controllers with fixed gain or robust controllers. Also, I will show a formulation of standard adaptive control architecture so that you can directly implement your adaptive controller after watching this video. I will finalize my short talk by referring to my recent advanced adaptive control research. Let's get started. Why adaptive control? You are seeing a helicopter uh, picture. So here is a helicopter from our laboratory, uh, unmanned aerial research facility from Georgia Tech. We deal with such systems. And uh, these systems are basically nonlinear, has time variations in their dynamics, and they have multi inputs, multi outputs, and hence it has coupled loops. As a control engineer, the first thing we do is to model such systems. And while doing the modeling, we resort to first principles of physics, idealized assumptions, model simplifications, and at the end of the day, the models that we have do not adequately capture the physical system. From a control design point of view, we need to design a controller to achieve and maintain performance goals under such system uncertainties. And of course, uncertainties not only result from the modeling phase. For example, it can uh, be a result of the mage. For example, let's consider this video. So an aircraft is flying well, but in the middle of the flight, 50% of the right wing is off. We need to design a controller such that it has to handle such unforeseen adverse conditions. And by the way, this video is again from our research facility at Georgia Tech. We deal with uncertain systems. And first approach is to design a fixed gain controller, no adaptation. Fixed gain controllers like robust controllers, first of all, requires an accurate system modeling information. For example, let's look at this graph. So we need to minimize uh, a performance error in order to improve the system uh, achievement goals So in order to minimize this error so that we can achieve a better performance. However, as you see from this graph, in order to minimize this performance error, we need to know the model more and more. As you see, there exists a direct trade-off performance with uncertainty. And also, if we look to the left side of this graph, if we have high levels of uncertainty, fixed gain controllers may fail to achieve a given system performance. And also, as this being said, it is important to mention that such controllers are tuned to the worst case rather than the physical system, meaning they cannot improve themselves they assume that the future will be much like present, ignoring environmental changes, change in dynamics or structural damage, as I showed you in the earlier video. Motivating from this standpoint, basically adaptive controllers are advantageous because, first of all, they achieve a given system performance asymptotically without excessively relying on system models and they do not trade performance for modeling accuracy. Again, let's check this uh, graph given below of this slide. Basically, as you see, the adaptive controller uh, basically achieves the same level of performance that their fixed gain controller achieve without knowing the system model and without basically requiring modeling accuracy. And also, more importantly, it improves them itself under unforeseen adverse condition. It learns as it flies. Here is the standard uh, adaptive control architecture that I am going to talk about in this presentation very briefly uh, for motivational purposes. Basically, it is a very common scheme, so-called model reference adaptive controller. Let's look at more closely. We have an uncertain dynamical system given in the blue box. Uh, we have a controller. 
and we have a reference system. This reference system given in a yellow box, driven by a command, captures a uh, desired overshoot, desired system uh, setting time, so on and so forth. So I want my system output, blue output, to behave as the reference system output. This difference ca um, uh, corresponds to a system error, and system error drives the update law, and update law tunes the controller such that my uncertain system output will be uh, behave like the reference system output. So that's the philosophy behind modular reference adaptive control. Mathematically, let's consider this uncertain dynamical system. x dot equals to ax plus bu plus delta uh, d multiplied by delta of x. And this is the simplest form. And here uh, you know a, you don't know b, and you know d, but uh, you don't know delta. Delta is the nonlinear uncertainty. Here I am assuming uh, I know the state vector x, and here u corresponds to control vector, and b is the parameterized as d known part multiplied by uh, lambda unknown part, and lambda is basically control effectiveness. So here I am assuming that the uncertainty uh, delta of x parameterized as w transpose sigma of x. Here w is the unknown set of ideal weights. And uh, sigma is the, my basis function. So here I know the basis. I know how uncertainty is uh, captured by this ba uh, basis. And if we don't know, basically, we can always resort to universal approximation tools such as this neural network. So here there is no loss in general. Here is my reference system. I want uh, my system to behave like this. Um, linear system here, AR is asymptotically stable or so-called Hurwitz, and hence it satisfies this Lyapunov equation, and BR is the command input matrix, and C is the command. Uh, if you think about a uh, second order reference system, uh, you need to uh, design, choose it in such a way that you have some settling time, uh, you know, rise time, overshoot, so on and so forth. So this is your desired closed loop model that you would like to ultimately achieve. Here is my uh, control signal composed of a nominal controller UN and plus an adaptive controller. So why we have a nominal controller? Because, for example, if you think about, let's say, uh, you are going to design a controller for F16, uh, right? So no one will allow you to remove the existing controller and put your fence adaptive controller in the industry. So you always have a nominal controller. Here, um, you have a nominal controller, you can have any nominal controller, okay, PI, PID. So here I'm assuming that it has K1X plus K2C. C is the command again. You can design K1 and K2 based on AR equals to A plus DK1. It is your, uh, how you choose K1. Sorry for the typo. And you choose K2 based on BR equals to D multiplied by K2. You all know these terms. After that, uh, you need to design adaptive controller, right? You are augmenting a nominal controller with adaptive controller. And to do that, let's write the closed loop dynamics as x dot equals to arx plus brc plus d uh, delta multiplied by ua plus the unknown terms. These are w sigma and wun are unknown. You know sigma basis, you know un, the nominal control sigma. Now, Inside the brackets, adaptive controller can directly access these uncertainties. A logical selection for the adaptive controller is like that. Minus w hat sigma minus w hat un uh, multiplied by un. Here, w hat, uh, both w hats corresponds to estimates of the original w. Now, based on this adaptive control signal, uh, here is your first weight update loss, uh, given in the last two lines. Basically, these tune your W hat so that adaptive controller minimizes the difference between your uncertain system's output and the reference system output, so that your system behaves as the actual reference system, as t goes to infinity. And uh, these are gammas, gamma sigma and gamma un are basically positive definite adaptation gains or learning rates 
if you choose them higher, you learn faster, basically. And uh, these two weight update loads, given the last two lines, are not derived out of the view. Basically, they are based on Lyapunov theory. We consider this Lyapunov energy function candidate. And when you minimize, uh, when you take its derivative with respect to uh, closed loop trajectories of E, W tilde, and uh, other W tilde U, and basically you have V dot equals to minus E transpose P E, which gives you Lyapunov stability. And by the Barbalat's lemma, basically you can say as T goes to infinity, error goes to zero. Perfect. Now, of course. Okay, uh, you can read uh, this uh, standard adaptive control formulation from my website. Uh, I include uh, most of uh, my papers very briefly, uh, so just check for, for my conference or uh, journal uh, papers for a simple formulation. But of course there are caveats with the standard adaptive control, for example, how we can have robustness with respect to noise, with respect to high frequency dynamical system content, also how we can achieve robustness against uh, our model dynamics, unmatched disturbances, so on and so forth. And how we can achieve a guaranteed trans transient response. Okay, we are learning the system and we eventually drive this error to zero, but during the learning phase, how we can achieve a guaranteed transient performance and robustness. So this is uh, one of my current research topics, so I would uh, encourage you to go to my web page and uh, check for these uh, six recent papers, most of them published in uh, 2012 and to, some of them are 2011. Of course, this is a very hot topic, so I would uh, encourage you to check the literature as well. You can read the literature from my papers or you can just uh, amazing websites, Scholar, uh, Google, uh, check the robust adaptive control high performance adaptive control literature. Uh, standard model reference adaptive control is cool, but if you are dealing with safety critical systems, you need robustness and guarantees.